Today, I'm going to show you a method for learning or relearning to send Morse code that I believe will make the process easier, faster, more fun, and improve the quality of the code you send. Watch the video and see if you agree. Or maybe you already have some ideas about learning to send code. If so, please post a comment and tell me how you're doing it. Hello, I'm not Chuck, and I learned to send and receive Morse code more than 50 years ago. Back then, I had to demonstrate a five word per minute proficiency to get my novice license, and then increase my speed to 13 words per minute for my general ticket. I did it, but it was harder than it had to be. For sending, I used a straight key, which I still have, and it's in good shape because I put it away as soon as I got voice privileges. Back then, in the Dark Ages, there weren't many alternatives to straight keys. There were Vibroplex bugs, of course, but I couldn't afford one, nor could I stand the price of an electronic keyer. In fact, I had no idea even what that was. And if there was any such thing as a sideswiper, sometimes called a cootie, I hadn't heard of that either. Of course, now, in the 21st century, electronic keyers are plentiful. They're even built into many of the newer radios. Cooties, bugs, and paddles abound at prices, but they're up to several hundred dollars in some cases, and they don't have to cost that much. In fact, here's an economical single paddle key that can be used without any electronics at all. Just move the paddle to either side and it generates a dit or a da based entirely on how long you hold it off center and it's lots easier on the hand and arm than that old straight key of mine. This key was provided by Joseph Delgado of the CW Morse Company down in the great state of Texas and was proudly made right here in the USA. I'll put a link in the video description and you can check out the complete line of single paddle, double paddle, and straight keys. I think you'll agree that the company is named CW Morse for a really good reason. There are also lots of ways to make your own cootie key. Just Google it and you will see lots of examples. Notice that I said a single paddle key could be used without any electronics, but I didn't say it had to be operated that way. Being something of a shade tree electronics designer, I decided to see if I could piece together a circuit to use with the key. Let me show you what I came up with. Now, before you hurt my feelings by criticizing my sending, cut me a little slack. After all, it's been a long time since I've used any Morse code on the air. In fact, I am just beginning my journey back to the original digital mode of amateur radio. Starting on the left side of the breadboard, the integrated circuit is a pickaxe microcontroller. This one is a 08M2, and as you see, it's an eight-legged version the smallest member of the pickaxe family. There are 14, 18, 20, 28, and even 40 pin versions that operate on either 3.3 or 5 volts. The programming software and IDE are free and downloadable. I'll put a link in the video description to the pickaxe website in case you want to learn more. The Pickaxe 08M2 responds to contact closures from the CW Morse single paddle key and singles a MOSFET to turn on and off, which does two things. First, it controls a ground signal to the key input on an attached transmitter, and second, it gates the output from a built-in oscillator through another MOSFET. The tone oscillator circuit is a twin T and produces a really good sine wave. 
For this portion of my breadboard, I borrowed heavily from a design by K4ICY that was published in the December 2012 issue of the Tallahassee Amateur Radio Society newsletter. I'll link to that publication if you want to read the complete article. The output from the oscillator is fed to the input of an LM386 audio amplifier IC, where it is boosted by about 200 fold and supplied to an outboard 8 ohm speaker. Three potentiometers are used. The one on the left is to adjust the length of DITS DAWs and the spaces between the DITS and the DAWs. The spaces between the letters and between the words are controlled manually by the key operator. The net result is complete control of the code speed. The center pot controls the tone of the oscillator. The last pot controls the volume of the audio output. Power for the circuit comes from three AAA batteries in series for a total of 4.5 volts, but you can use any DC power supply you have as long as it's well regulated and never goes below 3 volts nor above 5 volts. The pickaxe microcontroller will likely die if you feed it more than 5 volts. So the circuit can be used as either a code practice oscillator or as a keyer for a radio transmitter, and it's just that simple. The lack of memory features is not an oversight on my part, rather it's my intention to follow the KISS KISS principle and encourage you to add the features you want. I'll provide a copy of my code to get you started, as well as a copy of my schematic diagram, the list of components, and my breadboard layout. The total hardware cost, including a solderless breadboard, should be around $20 or less, depending on what you might have on hand. Here's some footage of the keyer sending close to 27 words per minute. I think that sounds great, don't you? Once you get to that speed, you can treat yourself to a newer, faster keyer with tons of memory. Maybe you can even design your own. If you have questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to provide answers. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and telling your ham friends, or maybe friends who might want to be hams and learn Morse code. Have fun! 73, and don't forget, I'm not Chuck.